Hi, welcome to Quirky Queen's Journals. My name's Kirsten. So today I am using the big 8 by 10 jelly plate. I know it's not that big to some, but it's big to me. And I'm still getting to grips with this plate. I'm so comfortable with the A5 size that this A4 size is quite... Um, I'm still getting used to its ways. I have worked out though that I need to use a lot more paint than I thought I did, um, which has helped. So I have made some black marks with my permanent jumbo marker. And then I used one of the high flow acrylic paints to create that kind of um, wet black line going round and then the white Posca pen. Now here I am using water soluble oil pastels and a watercolour pencil because there was some white blah, wetness in that Posca pen and the black high flow acrylic line. So I wanted to see if the water soluble oil pastels and coloured pencils would, you know, would transfer to the paper. Now that is a pearlescent white, I suppose. It's quite transparent, but it is shimmery. So obviously there was drying time in there. Um, and I would say that actually it has transferred well. Um, there is some cleanups that I do in between with other um, jelly prints that I should add in actually. I will add in. So this is more of the oil pastels that are water soluble. I have put down glazing medium, an excessive amount. <laughs> now you can see there the pink oil pastel doesn't work so well, but the black one worked beautifully. So I suppose it's really one of those ones because the yellow is working well too. So it's one of those ones where some will work better than others. So I'm coming back out with a watercolour pencil. And again, the yellows went on not bad, but the black. No, is it the red? I think I bring out the red and the red goes on. Here, the red goes on wonderfully. Now, this is more of the high flow acrylic. Um, and I'm just using the colour shaper to move them about. They're like acrylic inks, so if you put them onto the jelly plate, they'll do the beading like watercolours would. However, because I'd put down the glazing medium, it has helped kind of, I suppose it's helped do that, whatever it is that stops it beading. <laughs> I was hoping for a more scientific explanation to come out there. So this is one of my cake decorating tools um, that I use on the jelly plate. I definitely don't decorate cakes with it. And that was magenta high flow acrylic paint. So pulling it off after a drying period. Quite happy with that. They're quite cool colours just now I feel. You know, it's it's not, um, there's nothing warm about it. Now, this is matte medium this time because I thought, let's try a different medium and see what will happen. Um, it makes no difference. <laughs> so this is more of the high flow acrylics. And what I'm doing is I'm seeing um, basically what I can do with them. So you can see little dendrites have happened, but nothing spectacular. And I use the green and the yellow as well. Unfortunately, though, I do add silicon to it. Um, I just thought, let's try the silicon drops that they use to make cells when they're paint pouring. And the silicon and the gel plate do not work well together. Um, it was almost like an oil that caused resistance. You'll see it when I put it on because I'll do a close up. I have sped this video up three times. So the silicon breaking down the paint is happening, is moving three times faster than it did in real life, but it was moving very fast. And what it's done is it has, you know, it's transferred onto the paper and then that's made 
further layers harder to pick up. That's it there, eating away. Can you see it? So, I'll not be using the silicone drops on the jelly plate again. So it does become a bit of a repair job after this because what I was going for was I do like experimenting with these quite abstract modern type compositions especially you know when I use the big black marker and this green was because I had had a lot of red I'd chosen the green to, to go with it to complement it. I'm always trying green and red in a way that it doesn't look like Christmas. <laughs> so this is just wallpaper lining paper that I have some edges have been cut and other edges are just torn and I'm using these as masks on the jelly plate um I think the silicon normally I find that when I use like book pages or this wallpaper lining paper that the they stick quite well to the jelly plate and then you're able to paint over the top of them but they just they just didn't get that su suction to the jelly plate that they normally do. So they moved about quite a bit. So that's heavy body white titanium white ugh, acrylic paint with yellow high flow acrylic paint. And I've just mixed them together. Um, probably in this situation, it wasn't ideal <laughs> because I just made it even harder for trying to hold all the bits of paper in place. The other thing is as well is this was meant to, you know, because I've got quite a lot of rough areas and it's all about, um, there's a lot going on on the print that I'm making just now. So I'm trying to make areas that are just one colour and that's what this purpose was. And this went on quite rough with big gaps. So it only increased the busyness. You can actually see the silicon bleeding through the paper. And that's a 200 GSM mixed media paper. It can take quite a lot of wear and tear. So I actually put it back on. And I tried to lift it again. I was hoping that a bit of, I'm not sure if that was matte medium or glazing fluid, would just help lift the last of it up. And it helped a bit, but it's not made it look any less messy. It's basically very messy and it needs, it needs areas of quite, solid colour to break that up and make the messy parts actually look interesting like the intention was. So this is me trying again with indigo. So we are, I mean, uh, this must be about four or five layers now. So we're, even though it's good quality paper and it, it is a uh, mixed media paper, you know, there is a limit to how many layers that you can pull up on the same print. Um, and really what's happening is the indigo blue, it just added another layer to the messiness. <laughs> As you'll see. I mean, don't get me wrong, I actually think that the colours are really starting to work well together. It's looking less cool. Now, I forgot to show you, I, I put down the yellow ochre paint and then I put the stencils on top of it. So, this is me knowing that it doesn't matter how many layers of solid colour I put on, <laughs> it's never going to rectify. So, determined not to give up, I have gotten out the Posca pens and, do you know what, I'm so actually so glad this whole process went a bit off because this actually reminds me of the video that I did where I said it looked like a big teddy bear 
with the gold lines through it because I just feel that the way that this has ended up looking, it, it almost looks like it, it, it matches up with that one as if this was meant to be. This has been a very happy accident, as they say. I think as well, because there's so many layers on, there's a lot of texture now. And also, when you think about it, I've used quite a lot of mediums on here. I've used the water-soluble oil pastels, watercolour pencils, the two types of acrylic paints. And I've also used different tools to put them on, like the colour shapers. So, you know, there's quite a lot of variety in there. So when I'm actually drawing with the pens, there's like ridges and and bits where the pen doesn't go over it quite the same. So the lines are not clean. It's almost a bit like writing on a stone wall. And that brings something really nice to the pen work so it doesn't just look like the pen has been added to a blank page now I hope that makes sense what I said I don't think that this would have looked as good if I had stuck down college pieces and drew black pen around them that's what I'm trying to say Oh, I have a big pen leakage just there on the left-hand corner at the bottom. Um, it is a bit off camera, so you can't see it very well. So we tidy that up later on when it dries a bit. I just think even if I left it that, it looks really good. I just felt the yellow ochre was still a bit too scratchy looking. So they were, the background and the shapes were... They were very, even though they're very different colours, there was still too much similarity in them. That was my thought. So I'm doing some outlines with the gold Posca pen, but against the yellow ochre, it doesn't stand out great. So I just end up colour blocking the lot. And I'm using white pen around the outside because... Um, Without a proper registration plate, it's hard to be very accurate when you're reapplying the same piece of paper to the jelly plate all the time. You just have to, I just keep going between the three Posca pen colours because obviously, like when I'm putting this gold on here, I disturb the black lines a bit. And that is something that actually I quite. I like that the the three colours of pen, you know, like when I'm putting the white down the sides, it kind of takes away some of the black line. And it to me, it just makes it look all a wee bit more natural. When the black pen leaked and I've put the gold pen over the top, I've gotten it in the nib of the gold pen. So that's what all the scribbles are at the side. I'm trying to get the black pen off it. So my initial thought was just to colour in the, you know, the kind of the most detailed shape, that one in the top left hand corner. I thought I'll just do the lines on that. But then when that's when I realised that actually I think overall it looks better with that. And I think as well, you could probably scratch into this as well and take let some of the yellow ochre show through if you wanted or when the Posca pen was still wet like if you imagine in that rectangle in the bottom right hand corner if I just coloured that in and then put a bit of tissue paper over the top that would have lifted some of that gold Posca pen off so you would have had more of the yellow ochre shining through so there's lots of ways that this actually could have went and still has the potential to go if I changed my mind about having the solid gold but it's unlikely I will because I just love it. <laughs> I also like that I tried some new mediums on the jelly plate as well actually and um, although they were quite subtle and on their own it, I don't think you could do a full jelly print with watercolour pencils or water soluble oil pastels because I think that it would just take too long and 
the result probably wouldn't be worth the effort. However, I think that they add subtleties in the background that would be hard to achieve, um, you know, with just acrylic paint. So this is the finished result and I absolutely love it. And I hope you do too. And thanks very much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye.